Is the trigger on your expensive Dyson cordless vacuum getting soft to a point where it can no longer turn on the vacuum? Let's see how it could be replaced for just $12. Hi, this is David at Baba. Welcome to my channel. Please consider subscribing if you like useful tech for the family like me. In today's video, let's see how to replace the broken trigger of this expensive Dyson V11 cordless vacuum. Dyson makes great vacuums that take a beating. We have had our V11 for over 4 years and use it extensively. It mostly replaced our much bigger and heavier corded vacuum. While it's gotten quite dirty and beaten up, it was still going strong with powerful suction for our carpets and hardwood floors. You can see my earlier review linked here and in the description below after this one. I was surprised to find the other day how this trigger is the weakest link. I never like how I have to hold on the trigger to turn on the vacuum, but that's another story. And if you stay tuned, I'll share a little gadget to make using it so much easier. Now the vacuum is not the easiest to take apart, but with some patience and proper tools, it can be done. First of all, we'll need this replacement trigger that I got off Amazon for just $12. I'll put links to this one and even better reinforced ones in the description below. Next, a couple of screwdrivers you may already have. A Phillips number one screwdriver, one with a long rod, a TX Torx screwdriver, again one that has a long rod so it can reach into the housing. A small plier which will be very handy to bend a couple of terminals and pull the trigger out. I'll put a link to this pack of needed tools in the description below for your reference too. Okay, let's get into it. First, pull out the filter in the back. <laughs> Mine is very dirty and needs a good wash. Then remove the dust bin by pushing this tab in and pull the entire bin out. Use the Phillips screwdriver and take out the three screws holding the battery. First one is in the back of the handle. By the way, this is how you change the battery too. The other two screws are on the bottom of the battery. Once these screws are removed, give it a good pull and the battery should come off. Next, we need to take off the cyclone assembly. There are six screws to remove. One, two, three, four, and number five and six on the inside of the handle. These are still Phillips screws, so use the same Phillips number one screwdriver. Screws number five and six are on the inside of the handle. Once these screws are removed, just give it a little tug and the assembly comes off. Wow, <laughs> dusty. This is a good chance to clean up the inside of the vacuum. Now we need to remove this little white cover. There are two TX Torx screws to remove. This is our first encounter of these T8 Torx screws, so use the T8 Torx screwdriver to remove them. Now comes the first tricky part for me. In addition to these two screws, there are these two clips, one on each side holding down this cover. The cover needs to be pried open carefully. I find using a flat screwdriver or a prying tool helps to separate the cover from its clips. Then remove the two TA torque screws that holds down the terminal. Note that these are different shorter screws with washers on them. There's also this small wire connector we need to disconnect. It comes off the PCB with a light yank on the top using my fingernail or a flat tool. Next, another tricky part. Well, it seems a bit destructive rather than tricky. Dyson certainly didn't make this vacuum easy to service. These two thick metal terminals need to be bent straighter with the plier, 
so it's easier for us to take the center assembly with the PCB out. I'm glad Dyson did make these terminals quite thick so they could withstand the bending back and forth. Carefully remove the center assembly with the PCB. We're almost there. Need to remove these two TA Torx screws above the handle holding down this cover to get to the trigger. These screws are inside the round housing, so we need to get at them at a bit of an angle. Once these screws are off, use a flat screwdriver or a flat tool to pop the cover off. Now to pull this cover off easier, I had to bend and straighten out the two terminals even further. Again, good thing these terminals are thick enough to be bent back and forth. With this cover off, there is one last TA Torx screw inside the handle to remove. It's hard to see since it's really in there. It's right next to the red bottom part of the trigger. Alright, we're there. With the plier Grab onto the bottom part of the trigger assembly inside the handle. Push the trigger in. It takes some wiggling back and forth to pull the trigger assembly out. Now we can see the problem clearly. The red plastic trigger has this little crack in its arm. So it no longer can spring all the way back, nor put enough force to turn on the vacuum. This replacement trigger I got here has the exact same design. So I'll report back in the comments below if it breaks again. i also put links to better reinforced triggers in the description below. Let's put the new trigger on where the old broken one was. Put the spring back on the trigger. Okay, now that the trigger is replaced, just reverse the steps to put everything back together. Put the trigger housing back into the handle. It takes a while to get the two terminals and the little wire through to the top. Screw back the T8 torque screw in the handle to tighten down the assembly. Then slide the two terminals and the wire through the cover. I had to use a plier to tuck on the terminals a bit to help pull them through. Put the two T8 torque screws in to hold the cover down. Then insert the terminals and the wire through the bottom of the center PCB housing. Reconnect this little wire connector by pushing it onto the PCB board carefully. Then bend the metal terminals back to 90 degrees with the plier. And hold them in place with the two TA Torx screws with washers. Snap the white cover back on by pushing the two clips back in on the upper left and right corners. Secure the cover with the last two TA Torx screws. Then reattach the cyclone assembly. And tighten it down with the four Phillips number one screws on the back. and two screws inside the handle.
put the battery pack back on next. With the two screws on the bottom. And the last screw at the back of the handle. Slide the dirt bin back on. And put back my very dirty filter that needs a good wash. I'll wash it right after this. <laughs> All right, the moment of truth. Give it a push. Hey, it works. The whole process took me about an hour. Not difficult, just takes a lot of patience. Let me know how it goes for you in the comment section below. As promised, in addition to being the weakest link, if you're tired of holding down this trigger button to vacuum like me, Check out this little gadget I found. It slides onto this little flat part under the trigger like so. Adjust it so it slightly touches the trigger. Then just flip this little gray crank down. And voila! It holds the trigger in place to keep the vacuum off. The vacuum can be turned off just by flipping this trigger back up amazing little thing. I'll have a link to this little gadget as well in the description below. Thanks for watching. If you find any part of this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share this video with your friends. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life for kids and family, please subscribe and check out this video next. I'll see you in that next one. Until then, remember to cherish each moment.